In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to measure a small signal RF amplifier with the Nano VNA. This video was prompted after a conversation with my friend Bill, N2CQR. Bill is an avid uh, ham radio home brewer, meaning he designs and builds his own rigs. And uh, he was using an amplifier such as this in the IF stage of a rig and wanted to use the Nano VNA to validate the input impedance of this amplifier and was having trouble doing it, was getting some confusing results. This amplifier is known as a termination insensitive amplifier, meaning the input impedance will not really be a function of the load that's presented at the output, and the output impedance is not going to be dependent on the impedance of the source presented at the input. This amplifier is described uh, in a paper by Wes Hayward, W7ZOI, and Bob Kopsky, N3NHI, and you can find it on Wes's uh, website, W7ZOI.net. The particular design that Bill is using is here on page 3 of this paper. And it's described as a bi-directional amplifier, but what it really is is two amplifier stages, one, going, one that goes in this direction and one that goes in this direction, and they're powered up independently, one for the transmit path, one for the receive path. And the idea is, is that these amplifiers behave nicely with uh, input and output impedance, regardless of the load presented, and the circuit that's powered down doesn't affect the operation of the circuit that's powered up. So this could be used on either side of, say, an IF filter for both a transmit path and a receive path, hence the name of bidirectional amplifier. So for the experiment here, I've only built one half, just to, just to look at one half of the circuit going in one direction. I didn't build the second amplifier. And really the only effect that the second amplifier is going to have on the input impedance is that when this circuit, say, is turned off, you're going to see this, you know, uh, 47 ohm and 470 ohm uh, resistor to ground in parallel with the input. So it's going to tend to ever so slightly lower the input impedance just with this resistive parallel path. But uh, I'm going to kind of ignore that because that's a little bit immaterial to the problem that Bill was seeing in making the measurement. So let's go dig in to see what the measurement looked like, what went wrong, and how to fix it. So the first thing we have to do is set up the Nano VNA for the traces that we want, the frequency range that we want, and we have to calibrate it. So let's start off by selecting the, the traces we want displayed. We'll go to trace. Trace 0 is the S11, which is going to be the input uh, reflection uh, coefficient. So we'll take a look at that. Trace 1 is going to be the S21, okay, which is our the, essentially the gain of the amplifier, so we'll leave that one on. Trace 2 is the complex impedance on the Smith chart, so we'll leave that one. Trace number three is the phase of the uh, through the amplifier. I don't really care about that, but maybe we'll change trace number three to be the SWR. So let's go back to format SWR, and then we have to tell that that that's going to be on channel zero. So now I've got the traces that I want. Next, let's set up the frequency range. Um, the rigs that uh, Bill was working on are primarily HF rigs. This amplifier is typically used in an IF stage, but let's cover the whole HF frequency band. So we'll go to stimulus, set our start to 1 megahertz. We'll set our stop frequency to 30 megahertz. So now we have our stimulus set up. The next is to run the calibration. Okay, to run the calibration, we'll go back, hit calibrate and hit reset to kind of start from scratch and then we hit calibrate and the first thing it's asking for is the open so we'll attach our open to the input port and that's the that's the SMA that has looks like a, an empty bucket in there there's no pin or anything like that that's our open we'll connect that up hit open and when that completes we're ready to apply the short so we'll disconnect our open take the short and that's the one that looks like uh, it's got a pin in there, but the whole thing is completely solid gold, so it's a, presenting a short circuit. And then touch short. And when that completes, you'll see it lights up uh, for load. So I'll we'll take our 50 ohm load and connect that to the input next. And touch load. And when that's done, see isolation lights up. Uh, we can move our load to the channel 1. Uh, port to kind of isolate that to keep that from collect, uh, picking up any stray signals and hit isolation and when that's done it's asking for the through so with that we'll connect both ports together okay, with our through connection done we hit through 
And with that done, we can touch on done, and it prompts us to save uh, the result into a slot. We'll save this into slot number one. So now with us properly calibrated, for example, we can throw a 50 ohm load back on the input, and we can see that that uh, goes right to the center of the Smith chart, indicating a 50 ohm load. Now we're expecting this amplifier to present a near 50 ohm load uh, based on the design uh, that's described in the paper uh, to, uh, to RF signals. So let's go take a look at what that is. Well, so this is uh, the confusing result that Bill got. Instead of seeing 50 ohm input impedance, he's seeing in the order of about 122 ohms but, uh, uh, along with 22 picofarads. And again, if I move across the frequency, we can see it's not moving that much. And it's largely resistive. I mean, it's very close to the horizontal axis in the Smith chart, so it's largely a resistive impedance, but 122 ohms and not uh, 50. So what's going on here? Now, one way we can verify the input impedance of this amplifier is just do the kind of the voltage drop method. I have a signal generator over here that is, to, is set up to put out uh, 100 millivolts peak to peak into a 50 ohm load. So I've got that going into the scope. The scope is set to 50 ohm termination and I've got a 100 millivolts peak to peak because there's 50 millivolts of division. If I change the input termination to the scope from 50 ohm to 1 meg, we can see the output amplitude doubles as we'd expect because now we're not getting that voltage divider from the 50 ohm output impedance of the generator and the 50 ohm input impedance of the scope. So we can see that uh, if we present the generator with a 50 ohm load, the signal should be right there at 100 millivolts peak to peak. So let's take that same signal and apply it to the input of the amplifier and see what the amplitude looks like. So now I've got that same signal hooked into the input of the amplifier and I'm probing right at the input connector. And if we look at the scope, we can see we're seeing 100 millivolts peak to peak, just like we did when we were connected directly. So that tells me that indeed the input impedance is as mathematically predicted 50 ohms, but the VNA is not showing that. So what's going on? So the problem turns out to be that the nano VNA H and H4, uh, its RF output is a fixed amplitude square wave. Uh, the square wave doesn't matter so much, but the fact that it's a fixed amplitude and in this frequency range is, you know, on the order of about 600 millivolts peak to peak, that amplitude is too large for the input of our termination and sensitive amplifier and it's driving it into its non-linear operating range which essentially breaks the feedback that determines or sets what the input impedance is and therefore it's reading incorrectly. Well just to verify this what I've done is I've taken the uh, output of the amplifier and sent it into channel 3 of the scope and that's the, uh, the purple trace here and that's at two, uh, 200 millivolts of division. We're still looking at 50 millivolts of division at the input. If I increase the input to say 200 millivolts peak to peak, everything still looks good. 300 millivolts peak to peak, we start to see some distortion on the output. We hit it again, and now at the 400 millivolts peak to peak, I see some se severe distortion. So obviously if I get to 600 millivolts peak to peak input, the output is pretty severely distorted, which tells me that the input amplifier is going into its nonlinear range. So the bottom line is in order to accurately measure the input impedance of this amplifier, we need to ensure that the signal being applied to its input is within its operating range, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of up to about maybe 200 millivolts, 250 millivolts peak to peak. All right, so how do we reduce the output amplitude of the nano VNA? Well, we can apply an attenuator. So I selected this 13 dB attenuator for two reasons. One is it will attenuate our 600 millivolt output from the nano VNA down to about 134 millivolts peak to peak, and that's well within the range for the amplifier we want to test. And secondly, it's because of another limitation of the nano VNA. We can't adjust the reference level, or the expected signal level, into the channel 1 port when we're measuring gain. So if we just hook the amplifier directly up and it's got a gain of about 15 dB, that means the signal being applied at the input here will be 15 dB higher than what the nano VNA is producing. And that might overload the input of the nano VNA. But by cutting down the signal by 13 dB, then going through the 15 dB amplifier, the signal coming in here is only going to be, going to be about 2 dB higher than the nano VNA would normally expect for, say, a passive device. And that's acceptable. So our 13 dB attenuator will work just fine. So with the 13 dB attenuator applied to channel 0 or port 1, 
We can then repeat the calibration process using the open, load, short, you know, isolation and through at this location instead of at this location. That will uh, calibrate out this 13 dB loss and give us a test signal that is within the appropriate signal range for our amplifier. Now for the sake of time I'm not going to show that calibration process all over again but uh, that's what we need to do. Okay with that calibration complete we can validate that uh, the calibration all worked. Uh, I can see I've got my open, I've got nothing connected here. If I connect my short to the output here we can see the Smith chart moves all the way over to the 9 o'clock position indicating a short and if we replace that short with the 50 ohm load uh, we can see that the Smith chart returns right to the bullseye indicating I've got a, a 50 ohm load. So now the calibration is complete and we're ready to go make the measurement on our amplifier. Okay, with the proper calibration with the 13 dB attenuator going into our termination and sensitive amplifier measuring again from 1 to 30 megahertz uh, we can see that my input impedance is very close to 50 ohms. In fact, at the marker frequency, which is about 5.4 megahertz, uh, we can see that uh, we're sitting at about 52 ohms of uh, uh, impedance. And we can see that the S11 is 30 dB or 31 dB, so we've got 31 dB of return loss. That translates to an SWR of about 1.05, so that all looks pretty good. Now we should be able to verify the gain of the amplifier by hooking up the output uh, to channel 1 or port 2 of the VNA. But the problem we see is that the, the, the S21 is way up at the top of the screen. So we need to adjust the reference level position instead of being all the way up here, knock it down a couple of steps. So we can go into display and select that trace, trace 1, and we need to change the scale for that trace and change our reference position to say line number five. We can see that move the reference position down here. Now I can actually see the trace up there. If we look at the marker, we're looking at about 14.84 dB. We expected this to be about a 15 dB amplifier. It's not inconceivable that I've got a few tenths of a dB loss in my connections. Now one final thing I did is I changed my stop frequency to 150 megahertz because I wanted to measure uh, the 3 dB bandwidth of this amplifier. So I changed that and I recalibrate it again and save that calibration. See that's in calibration slot number three. And, uh, and now if we move our marker along, we can see that again we're about that 14.86. Our 3 dB bandwidth would be when this gets down to 11.86. So let's advance the marker and see where we get down to about that point here. And it looks like we're in that neighborhood right there. So that says that our 3 dB bandwidth is about 87 megahertz for this amplifier. Not too bad for a couple of 2N3904s and a handful of parts. So I hope this video has helped to uh, show you why you've got to worry about sometimes the output amplitude of the nano VNA and adjust it accordingly to meet the input signal requirements of the device you're testing and then how that, that attenuator can also help to compensate for the gain in the amplifier when measuring something like S21 or the gain. If you like the video give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. And thanks again as always for watching.